Get the ultimate experience in cleanliness and comfort without breaking the bank when you transform your bathroom with Niagara. From toilets to bidets, Niagara has the perfect solution for any bathroom project. Niagara's award-winning products not only outperform the competitors, they also outdesign them. Thanks to innovations like stealth technology, Niagara's environmentally friendly products can use only half as much water as their competitors, conserving water and saving you money. And there's more great news for homeowners. You can now shop for Niagara products on Amazon or HomeDepot.com. Thank you, Niagara. Hello, I'm Nate Newton and uh, back at you here. Uh, my main sponsor is Niagara. Uh, they, they, they're they the toilet people. They, uh, don't, don't laugh, T. This is the toilet people. Niagara, they do it big for us, man. Uh, my partner Isaiah right now, he's out, he's out of pocket, but he will be with joining us soon here in a couple of weeks. But right now, you know, I'm Nate Newton and, uh, and I'm uh, bringing this podcast to you and it's called Let Me Tell You Something. I have a special guest here. He is my brother. Tony Newton. We call his name is Christopher Antonio Newton, but I call him Tony. He's my best bro. He's my best friend. Uh, we rap about everything, life. We talk about our uh, experiences all the time, our families. Uh, I love him to death. He's in town for the game this week when we jump on them jets, the Rogerless jets, but we'll get to the, that cowboy stuff later. Uh, I want to talk to my brother Tony about his recent experience. He's been on with us before, so I'm kind of talking as though y'all should know him but he uh y'all sh- y'all may not know him but uh he's been on with us before his name is tony uh newton and uh he's uh give me your title tony i want to make sure it's right and proper with the job that you do tony okay since you threw the government name out there <laughs> uh, chris chris newton aka tony newton to the family and uh, I currently work with Orlando Magic. I'm the director of security for Orlando Magic. And that is my that is my brother. I mean, doing his thing. Uh, he started out with the Orlando Police Department. He worked there for how many years, Tony? Oh, wow. 25 years, Orlando Police 25 Department. 25 years. He's always tried to get into the private sector. I don't know if you call it Orlando Magic a private sector, but uh, the reason I brought him back on is he just did the FIBA World Cup games. Uh, he was a part of that uh, security team. And uh, what I'm going to do is uh, turn this over to Tony and let, you, and let him tell you uh, about what he has done for the last month and a half or so. Oh man, what a what a great experience! It actually started out in Vegas, where all the players and the team and coaches all reported out to Vegas in August, around August first. And I think our first exhibition game was uh, against Puerto Rico that that following like August third. So basically, uh, the USA basketball team, which consumed the NBA players from all over the league, uh, some of the best of the best from each team. Um, they, uh, we met in Vegas, played those exhibition games in Vegas, which was two games there. Uh, from Vegas, we traveled to Malaga and played a few exhibition games there. From Malaga, we traveled to Abu Dhabi and played exhibition games there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and from Abu Dhabi, we went to Manila to where that's when the cup started in the pool play. The top two teams out of the, out of the pool went to the elimination round. Let me stop you there. And we led the way. Let me stop you there. Right. Did the Orlando Magics have any players uh, involved? And if they were involved, how were you as your security and how did you fit there? Okay. Well, first of all, let me give a big shout out to the German national team, which is uh, which was led by Franz Wagner and Mo Wagner, which is two members of the Orlando Magic organization, two players that won the FIBA World Championship. Franz led the way. Also, uh, we had Goga with Georgia, and we had uh, Ingles with Australia that represented their countries also from the Orlando Magic. With the U.S. national basketball team, we had Pablo Bencaro representing uh, the USA, and he's a part of the Mag- Magic organization. And so now, continue on, you know, you, into, the, into how these games were set up and where you said they started, where playing the uh, regular games and how did, how did the advancement go and how it was the elimination, single games, double games, how was the elimination, how did we build that up there again? 
Well, well, basically in, in Vegas, all, everything was exhibition. Right. It was for the fans and for the world to see. Uh, we get the uh, Malaga, same thing. Where we played, you know, like three or four games there. Everything was just for the fans and the world and the teams to get ready. Same thing in Abu Dhabi. Yes. Once we arrived there, exhibition games. Yes. Once we got to Manila, mm-hmm. that's when the, each teams were put into groups. It was five different, five or six different groups uh, from all around the world. The top two teams from each group, they would play each other in in, 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 a, in the group, and the top two teams in that group would advance to the single elimination right. rounds to, to head towards the World Cup. And that's how, that's how basically that went. Once we got to Manila, that's where the uh, that's where the uh, I mean the real deal started and the elimination round started in Manila. Yeah, now and I can t- go, 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 ahead. On, go ahead on go ahead on go ahead on good things. Oh no, I was I was I, no, I was going to say about Manila, man. What a what a what a great country when it comes to uh, I mean they're so modernized with uh, they they love the USA, man. We were like USA was like rock stars over <laughs> yes. there, man. When it comes to the team. At our hotel, it was always just a, a a crowd, a line of people in the hotel. We go to the bus, and you know they, they treated us like we were the, uh, you know, like we was like the president. <laughs> we got police escorts. Right, right. And, you know, it, it was just an amazing experience with uh, traveling with the team like this, man. It's uh, you know, it shows that the world and the, and the world loves basketball, and they definitely love the USA when it comes to sports. In these different countries. What were some of the foods that you eat? Uh, what was suggestions would you give the people about the great food, uh, not great food, or the water? You know, because you always hear these great <laughs> stories and you hear a few bad stories. But you know, what were some of the great things in some of the cities? Talk about some of the cities before we get into why we didn't make uh, the cup standings. All right. Well, let's start back in uh, where it all started. Vegas. Vegas is great restaurants, great food. Right. Uh, you, you name it, most a hotel, low prices, right. but uh, Vegas, the food was great. Uh, let's leave out of the country. <laughs> the first stop was in Malaga, and Malaga is like right on the uh, it's on the uh, ocean there. You can actually from the resort where we're staying, you can see Morocco. You can you can see the African coastline right. when it's not cloudy yes. from the resort, which is man, it was it was beautiful. Uh, when it comes down to the restaurants and food there. I, I can say in Malaga, I ate some of the best Italian and some of the, the best fish that I've ever right, eaten right. In, in Malaga. I mean, it was it was it was if they display it when you walk in the restaurant, what the fish you probably gonna right. have, and they prepare it the way you want to prepare. But let me ask you, this, I don't want to cut you off now because you know a brother. Yeah. Now you know the brother gonna come. up. Did they have some catfish over there? Some perch? Uh, I didn't see I didn't see the cat. There was some fish names, some other stuff, but no catfish, no mullet. Okay. All right, well go ahead on, bro. Go yeah. ahead on. Yeah. yeah. And uh they didn't uh it wasn't a whole lot of wasn't a whole lot of fried. Right. And, you know, we love some fried catfish right. where we fried whatever where we right. from. So it wasn't a whole lot of fried. Right. So it was either it was either grilled or baked or however else they cooked mm-hmm. it. You, you know what I mean? Yes. Yeah, it might have even been wrong. Right. But uh it was it was it was actually the food was decent. And uh, and in Malaga, right. Abu Dhabi. Mm-hmm. When we arrived there, uh, you know that's a that's a Muslim nation. Yeah. So uh, it's uh, <laughs> all I can say. All I can say there right. was the food was a little was a little different. You, you know mm-hmm, what I mean? Mm-hmm. You have to. You basically you you pick and choose what you eat. And because uh, actually, uh, I. I I got a little sick actually in Abu Dhabi, right, so right. I had I had a bad experience there. And I, it was something to do with the food, so I was down for a couple of days. Okay, so okay. I'm glad we had some downtime. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but overall, it, it's a great country because it's it's only Abu Dhabi is probably about forty miles from Dubai, okay. and that was one of the things that some of the, the players and staff wanted to do. They want to, you know, venture out from our resort and mm. and go to the big city. Yes. Uh, of Dubai, which we did, and the, and the buildings in the city, man, it's just it's amazing, man. I, I don't know how these bu- they build those buildings. It's like they a hundred, I mean, a hundred stories tall. Wow. I mean, it's like they're double the size of some of the buildings in New York City. Mm. It's it's just it's amazing. Okay, wow. Yeah, it, I mean, but it's it, it was just amazing now. Yeah, but anyway, now now back to and uh, I. I, I 
what happened that we uh, wasn't even able to medal in the cups? We got fourth place. What what happened there with us? And, you know, you can be as truthful or as specific as you need to be without hurting anybody's feelings. I don't think we're going to hurt anybody's feelings. Yeah. Hurt anybody feeling. If you look at the overall picture with the U.S. US team, we lost, we lost three games, basically. And we lost by two points. We lost in overtime. We lost by six points. Right. And and just the way the team was developed, the way the team was put together, we weren't a we didn't have a team with a lot of size. You, yes. you know what I mean? We had some we had some star power players on the team. You know, well, we had some shooters. Uh, I mean, we had we had the big men that we did have, like Paulo for right. this distance from Orlando. I mean, he was actually playing out of position. They asked him to play center. He's he's not a center. Right. He's he's a power forward. So he was playing out of position. But you know, he's just a team guy. And he did what U.S. coaches wanted him to right. do. You know, uh, but I would say this: the style of play in Europe is totally different from the style of play in the United States. It's a traditional because you know, in the United States, our big man here they they running and they they run into the three point right, line. Right, right. You know, mm. and when you run into the three point line, you don't have everybody down there to rebound. Yes. And in FIBA basketball, they play traditionally where when you make those switches on them, and a big man is on one of your guards, they're gonna back him down and score. Right. And that that happened a few times when you got those those that German mm. team, that Serbian team, that Spanish team. So how team, big were they, T? They, Man, when I tell you they guard six five, right. <laughs> you know, uh, like I say, for instance, Franz Wagner, for example, with Germany that won it right. all. He's one of the ones that handled their ball quite a bit. And Franz is six nine, right. and we, uh, if you look, go back and look, mm. I mean, we put it like mm. this: if we played those same teams over here in the United States with our rules right. and the way we play in the NBA, right. we'd have ran every. T- I feel we'd have ran every team out of the gym. Right. right. But in FIBA, in FIBA basketball, mm-hmm. where those were basically you can't make gestures to the bench like we do here in the States because right. that got called on us a few right. times. When you when a player scored, I feel like in, in FIBA, you can't do right. that. And they're going to call a technical foul on yes. you know? so it's, it's more it's discipline. It's, 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 you think it's more discipline? It's old traditional basketball. Right. Back right. the way basketball was played in the 80s when big men Ruled. like dominated. Yeah. You had the human. Wow. You had a larger one. You know that that, and that's what they do. And when uh, when you got the when you when you got those smaller guys, then in the NBA, if you ever notice and you watch the NBA, it's a lot of switching going on during play. Yes. And when you make those switches, and they get the they get the uh, what they want on that switch, whoever that person is with the ball. They're gonna they're gonna go to the hole and try, and, and score. And most of the time they did right. because they had the advantage of a smaller guy. Right. Wow, wow! I just yeah. So it 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 it, it, was, it was it was it was tough, man. It, it's just I, people. I think the big thing out there right now is like you know over in the international world they're saying, okay, who is truly the world champions? And and I would say to that question, both of them are world champions. Right. When you got the German team, they're world champions. And the Denver Nuggets, their world champion mm. is just it's they're the NBA world champs. Germany is the uh, FIBA world champs. Right. I do think if Denver played any one of those teams, especially here, they would run them out of the gym. Right, right. It, you know what I mean? So, that, that's just my opinion because so, we got the best players in the okay, world. Okay, so my 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 question is: it seems like to me it is not a lot of questioning of the calls. Like over here, you can see guys fly off the handle if they don't get a call how was the refing over there was it more they're in control or did the players moan and groan like our players do here in the nba and the nfl it, 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 it's definitely the refs are in control because right. the 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 crime by the call man they'll put the ball in play you you still crying it's too late mm. you, you know what i mean they're definitely and, and they're not gonna allow too much chatter even on the bench i don't know if you mm. notice if you watch the people right. games they don't allow them to stand up very much. They'll stop the game and have the player, hey, you guys, y'all need to sit down. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> they don't want. <laughs> this is not America. Yeah. This is who we do yeah, all over here. Yes. Wow. Yeah, they don't They don't want any distractions. I mean, I don't know all the rules of FIBA play, mm-hmm. but what I but I do know the touch files that we get over here in the United States, you're not getting it right. in FIBA basketball. Okay. It's, it's a very physical game. 
And our players, they 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 saw that. Yes. That, you know, you gotta you gotta show that toughness out on the floor and match it. And I just think that just my opinion is, and I think it's some other people that know a lot more about basketball and, and, and professional sports than me. I just think we were undersized with our team that we, that was that was put together to play in that type tournament. Okay. Well, man, brother, I sure appreciate that, man. Just giving us an insight on, yeah. on how they do it. Now, one other question before we move a little bit further. How, mm. how do the international guys – do they view this? I'm talking about their players as something big, uh, equal to the NBA championship, or bigger. Oh, that's that's just what I spoke on, man. Yeah. With um, especially like uh, somebody like Schroeder, yeah. who led the German team. Yeah. He was like, I think he might have won MVP, right, right. And he showed up, and he showed up, and he showed out every game, bro. Uh, Franz Wagner, yes, uh, that's. Those guys, they they balled out, man. Okay. and they, it's 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 a big deal. I yes. mean, man, I feel I feel like anytime USA is represented, it, I think I heard a commentator say we don't lose. I forget who right. it was. I was watching some channel, but but we do lose. We have been losing mm-hmm. because you know you got to. It, we see now that you have to match the. Uh, you have to match the style of play and match the the, the personnel. The enthusiasm that those, too, bro. That, Ooh. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> and, and you got to understand, these teams have been playing together for decades, wow. years. I mean, some of their players are in their thirties. Wow! And this team that we, this team that we assembled, I mean, it was just this year we put them together, put them out on the court. Who? It doesn't work like that. It, who was the head coach? It doesn't matter the amount of time. Uh, Steve Kerr, okay. head coach. Uh, Mike Spolstra was the assistant. Uh, Ty, uh, Tyro Lou. They had a great one of the coach, the coaching staff. They had a, <clears throat> the best of the minds. Best, best of the best. They even had a college coach, the uh, uh, Gonzaga right. coach. He was also one wow. of the assistants there. I mean, it was. It, it's just. Uh, it, it's just my thing that I wouldn't put it on coaching. I won't. I won't definitely put it on what what they were doing. It's just the uh, personnel yes. wise has to bring them more through we, force with force. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, towards the end, I don't want to make excuses for the US team, but uh there were a few players that got sick towards the end of the tournament. Right. I don't know I don't know much about the medical reasoning behind right. it, but I would say I'm, I'm thinking it was something to do with what somebody right. ate or what they ate right. or but I know it was some players that got sick because right. in that final game against Canada right. where well, we could have played got the bronze medal, we only dressed out nine players. Wow. We were missing three three of our key mm. guys, which is uh Jared Jackson Jr., mm-hmm. uh, uh, Ingram from uh, New Orleans, and actually Paulo wow. was sick that final game. So we're missing our two starting, our two centers in that final game. And you know, Canada, you know, ain't no, you know, ain't no Joe, ain't no mercy in that league. <laughs> yeah, no so they wow. basically they took they took advantage of that situation. Wow. you know. Well, I, I thank you for yeah. that, Tony. I know. <laughs> You're in town for the game this week, and uh, is there any questions about uh, this Jets team besides Aaron Rodgers not being there? Zach Wilson, the quarterback, Quentin Quentin Williams, the great uh, defensive tackle slash nose guard. I mean, is there any questions, uh, or do you have an opinion of what you are looking for from the Cowboys this week against the Jets? Well, it just so happened I was on a plane coming from. <laughs> Uh, Manila yes. during the game, right. so I so I missed the game. Mm. But as soon as I landed, I did see the score was forty to zero. Yeah, against some Giants. <laughs> uh, yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's that's always good to beat that uh, in conference rival game. And what I can say is, from what I found out about the game, it sounded like the defense played lights out. Man, the defense is like doing their thing. So I'm thinking this week, uh, I'm thinking the offense gonna gonna show some improvement. And 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 that balances out in the offense and defense and special teams. Everybody do their thing. We might have the same result that we had against uh, against uh, the Giants because you know you gotta understand uh, the Jet stock went down when when right. uh, Rogers right, went down. Right. You know all the Dallas fans wanted to see Rogers roll in town to see what he do because you know Rogers has been a Cowboy killer for yes, years. Yes, he has. You know, yeah. So that was gonna be. That was one of my reasons for wanting to be here to see Rodgers coming here and, and face that Dallas defense. But it's unfortunate for that, their team and unfortunate for the league, man. And this guy went down with an injury, man. I would have loved to see that. 
You know, and I think the fans around here would have loved to see that. Yeah. But I do think that Dallas I do think Dallas is gonna win big against a young quarterback, uh, with what's going on there. I think he's not gonna be able to he's not gonna be able to uh deal with some of the schemes that uh, our Dallas defense is going to throw at him. Man, you see that my brother is knowledgeable, man. He he he, he, he knowledgeable about this thing. Uh, it isn't much yeah. I'm going to add about this game because it's so close and uh, we got to put this up so you people can see it, man. I just want to thank Tony for coming in, uh, being a part of this right here, you know, and uh, I want to thank Niagara our sponsors. Once again, I'm Nate Newton and uh, with Let Me Tell You Something, it should be a big week for the Cowboys. Do you have a score, Tony? In mind, uh, in this particular game, I don't see I don't see the Jets scoring very much. I say the Jets seven, Cowboys thirty five. Wow, that's a blowout. That's a blowout, especially with this great Jets defense led by Quentin Williams and multiple others. You know, Sauce Gardner at the corner. You know, they got um, uh, C.J. Mosley uh, at linebacker. They got all pros and pro bowlers on all levels of defense. Offensive lineman Bryce Hall is back as a running back. Uh, I can't think of the kid we got from Minnesota. Uh, he's nice. Uh, uh, so they got a run game. It's going to be the play-action pass. Can they uh, make something happen through the run game? So it's going to be a good game. I thank my brother for talking about the FIBA World Cups. And once again, Niagara, we flushed another one down. We love you. We thank you. Hey, let me tell you something. Dub Network, baby. We have plenty of other shows. Go out there and find it. Dub Network, we love you. Thank you. Bye-bye.